The Secret of the Titanoboa, the world's largest snake. Did you know that the largest anaconda ever recorded was almost 26 feet long and weighed more than 440 pounds? It was powerful enough to swallow a full-grown human with little difficulty. It is a terrifying ruler of modern swamps. But even that is nothing. Imagine a colossal snake the size of a school bus weighing over a ton and powerful enough to crush a giant alligator in just seconds. This creature isn't a product of science fiction, it was real. And the story of its existence isn't just about a giant, it's a secret about a world that has vanished. Around 60 million years ago, just a few million years after the last dinosaurs disappeared, our planet went through an unusually warm period. The hot, humid climate and high CO2 levels created a completely different world where cold-blooded creatures could grow to unprecedented sizes. Today, we'll dive deep into the Age of Giants, a world where even alligators were stranger than anything we can imagine. But that is still nothing compared to the true lord of the swamps, a creature for whom even giant alligators were just a snack. An adventure to the origins, Titanoboa carrigenensis. Titanoboa carrigenensis was not simply the largest snake known to have existed. It was a critical link in the story of Earth's recovery after the Cretaceous Paleogene KPG extinction event around 66 million years ago. After the non-avian dinosaurs vanished, many terrestrial ecological niches were left empty, creating the conditions for a powerful evolutionary explosion. In this context, this gigantic snake emerged and became a top predator, representing the incredible resilience of life after a global catastrophe. The story of the Titanoboa began in the early 2000s at the Sarajan coal mine in Colombia. During a joint expedition by the Smithsonian Tropical Research Institute and the University of Florida. In 2002, students and researchers, including Jonathan Block and Carlos Jaramillo, excavated colossal vertebrae and ribs. Throughout the expedition, which lasted until 2004, a total of 186 fossils from about 30 individuals were collected. Initially, these fossils were mistakenly labeled as ancient crocodilians due to their enormous size and robust structure. This confusion lasted until 2007, when a reevaluation recognized that these vertebrae had the characteristic shape of the Boidae family, boas and pythons, rather than crocodilians. This was a pivotal moment, as the size of the fossils was so extraordinary that it challenged conventional assumptions, requiring a deeper look and a reassessment of existing knowledge. The initial misidentification and subsequent correction demonstrate the rigorous, self-correcting nature of the scientific process. In 2009, a team of international scientists led by Jason J. Head officially announced and named this new genus and species Titanoboa cerajonensis, meaning Titanic boa from Cerajon, in the journal Nature. This publication officially established it as the largest snake ever found at the time, surpassing the old record held by Gigantophus garstini, a prehistoric snake known from the Eocene in Egypt. Anatomy, size, and morphological reconstruction. The primary fossil evidence for the Titanoboa consists of the 186 vertebrae and ribs that were found. Its vertebrae were very robust and broad, with a pentagonal shape when viewed from the front, similar to other members of the Boine subfamily. The scientific method used to estimate the snake's size was based on an established principle. Comparing the size of the fossilized vertebrae to the size ratios of giant modern Boyd snakes like the green anaconda, Eunectes marinus, and the southern African rock python, Python natalensis. Based on this comparison, initial estimates suggested a total body length of approximately 42.1 feet. Its weight was determined by comparing it to modern boids, resulting in an average of 2,502 pounds, with estimates ranging from 1,437 to 4,010 pounds. The existence of eight additional specimens of similar size to the one used in these calculations suggests that the Titanoboa commonly reached such colossal proportions. An expedition in 2011 brought back three separate Titanoboa skull fossils, making it one of the few fossil snakes with a preserved skull section. Finding a complete skull is extremely rare, as they are fragile and often crumble after the animal's death. 
This discovery provided a new, independent method to estimate size based on the ratio of skull to body length. Applying the green anaconda's ratio to the Titanoboa's 16-inch skull, scientists came up with a new total body length estimate of around 47 feet. The adjustment of the size estimate from 42.1 feet to 47 feet after the skull discovery is a crucial detail. It illustrates that paleontological knowledge is not static. Every new fossil fragment, no matter how small, can change how we understand a species' life and size, emphasizing the continuous and progressive nature of science. The Sarajan formation in the Paleocene was a wet, hot, swampy tropical forest dissected by a large river system. This environment was ideal for a gigantic semi-aquatic predator like the Titanoboa, as the water provided the necessary buoyancy for its heavy body to move with ease. The plant fossils here represent the earliest record of a neotropical rainforest. Although the composition of plant families was similar to modern rainforests, such as palms, legumes, and avocado family trees, the overall diversity of both plants and herbivorous insects was significantly lower at only 60 to 80% of the samples from current rainforests. The signs of leaf, damage from insects were common but they were mainly created by generalist herbivores rather than specialized ones. The low plant biodiversity and the prevalence of generalist herbivores are a strong signal that this ecosystem was still in the early stages of recovery from the KPG extinction event. This suggests that the Titanoboa thrived in an environment that, while lush and abundant, had not yet achieved the ecological complexity of today's rainforest. This context is essential for understanding why the Titanoboa could rise and occupy the position of a top predator. Additionally, this ecosystem was home to many other giant reptiles, including the car-sized turtle Carbonomys and several crocodilians, ancestors of modern alligators and crocodiles, like Cherijonosuchus, Acheronosuchus, and Anthracosuchus. This fauna highlights the dominance of reptiles in the period immediately following the dinosaur extinction before mammals had time to evolve to a similar size. The climate hypothesis, an ectothermic thermometer. The Titanoboa sparked a lively debate about the climate of the Paleocene. The initial hypothesis, presented in the 2009 paper, suggested that its colossal size could only have been supported by a climate with a significantly higher average annual temperature than today, around 86 to 93 degrees Fahrenheit. This was based on the metabolic principle that ectothermic, cold-blooded animals are limited in size by the ambient temperature. However, many studies have since opposed this hypothesis, arguing that the Titanoboa is an unsuitable thermometer. Counterarguments suggest that the Titanoboa could have used behavioral thermoregulation to maintain its body temperature, making its size an unreliable indicator of the global climate. Another convincing counterpoint is that applying this same model to the extinct giant lizard Varanus prisca yields illogical results, suggesting that other factors, such as competition with mammalian predators, which were absent during the Titanoboa's time, may have limited the size of modern reptiles, not just temperature. The conflict between these two viewpoints is an excellent example of how science works. The initial hypothesis was simple and powerful. A giant, cold-blooded animal must have lived in a hot climate. However, the criticisms forced the scientific community to consider a more complex perspective. The causal relationship, size, temperature, may not be entirely accurate because it overlooks behavioral adaptations and other ecological pressures. A debate on diet, fish hunter or constrictor? Initially, based on its immense size and habitat, the Titanoboa was thought to have behaved similarly to a modern anaconda, a top predator that would ambush and constrict large prey like crocodiles and turtles. However, direct fossil evidence has changed this view. Skull fossils found in 2011 and a summary in 2013 showed that the unique anatomical structure of the Titanoboa's palate and teeth suggested a more specialized diet, piscivorous, fish-eating. These adaptations are not seen in other voids, but are similar to modern snakes that feed primarily on fish. This is a classic example of how new direct evidence replaced a plausible but speculative hypothesis. The initial theory was based on similarity in circumstance, anaconda-like behavior in a habitat with alligators. The later hypothesis was based on specific physical evidence from the animal itself, dental and skull structure. 
the title of largest snake. For over a decade, the Titanoboa was considered the largest snake that ever existed. However, in 2024, paleontologists announced the discovery of the Vasuki Indicus from the Eocene in India. This snake was estimated to be up to 50 feet long, similar to or even exceeding the length of the Titanoboa. The debate isn't a simple dethroning. It's more complex. The Vasuki Indicus may have been longer, but the Titanoboa's vertebrae are slightly larger, suggesting a more robust and heavier body. The debate now revolves around which measure is largest, length or mass. This new discovery proves the ever-evolving nature of paleontology. It is not just about unseating a record, but also about raising a deeper question about how different evolutionary pressures lead to different body types, longer versus heavier. This finding also expands our understanding of the distribution and diversity of giant prehistoric snakes. Ecological Role and Extinction As a top predator, the Titanoboa was likely a semi-aquatic hunter, using its colossal size and power to overpower prey. It occupied a niche left vacant after the extinction of the non-avian dinosaurs. Its enormous size was likely a direct result of the hot, humid climate of the Paleocene. As global temperatures began to drop gradually in the late Paleocene and early Eocene, the conditions that supported such massive ectothermic animals disappeared. The appearance of larger mammalian predators may have also contributed to its decline. Scientists often wonder if future global warming could lead to the return of such giant creatures. Theoretically, it's possible, but researchers believe that it is highly unlikely in reality. The reason is that the speed of modern climate change is much faster than the gradual warming of the Paleocene. More importantly, the widespread destruction of habitats by humans has degraded diverse ecosystems, making them unable to support such colossal animals. The story of the Titanoboa is a vivid testament to the dynamic nature of science. From its initial misidentification to its title being challenged by a new contender, each step has deepened our understanding of Earth's past. The Titanoboa remains crucial evidence for understanding ecological recovery after extinction and is a unique biological indicator for the Paleocene climate. Its story is not just about a great animal, but also about the power of paleontology in revealing a lost world and constantly challenging our assumptions about the past. Looking at the big picture, our story is not just a journey into the past, but also a mirror reflecting the future. With current global warming, is there a chance that Earth will once again create ideal conditions for a new era of cold-blooded giants? Will reptiles once again rise to dominance? Or is the world too crowded with humans for such colossal creatures to reappear? If you're fascinated by the secrets of the past and want to explore more mysteries with us, don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment below. What prehistoric creature would you like us to bring to life next? We are always listening.